Senator Liu, thank you very much. It's great to be here. And Tonight, with the Iowa caucuses less than two weeks away, Donald Trump towering over the GOP field and flexing the power of his diehard base. The poll numbers are scary because we're leading by so much. The key is you have to get out and vote. The former president boasting a 30-point lead over his closest rivals in the Hawkeye State, gaining strength despite growing legal challenges, 91 criminal counts against him, and 14th Amendment pushes in multiple states to take him off the ballot. And we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election of 2024. We're not going to allow it. What's the next thing they're going to take away? Once they've done that, it's just a stepping stone on to the next thing. Trump ramping up his rhetoric in recent weeks, openly saying he would act as a dictator on the first day of a second term and using inflammatory language to describe immigrants. They're poisoning the blood of our country. That's what they've done. You don't vote for a personality. You vote for a person who can get the job done. The caucus now appears to be a race for second place. A recent Emerson College poll finding Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley separated by just two points. Donald Trump is running on his issues. Nikki Haley is running on her donors' issues. I'm the only one running on your issues. Iowa shaping up to be the biggest test yet for the Florida governor, who has a major ground game in Iowa, embarking on a 99-county tour and scoring the coveted endorsement of Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds. If you like what we're doing in Iowa, then you'll love what Ron DeSantis will do for this country. But after a series of awkward campaign moments, his massive momentum coming into the race has all but vanished. I was a big fan of Ron DeSantis, but as this, as his, um, as it's gone, as time gone, has gone on, he hasn't really done a whole lot to impress me. Instead, it's been former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley, who has pulled off a late surge, vaulting into second in multiple early voting states. It's great to be back in Dubuque. It's, I'm excited to be here. We but a notable omission from a town hall answer, now threatening her support. Asked about the cause of the Civil War, she failed to mention slavery, before saying later that it was the cause. What do you want me to say about slavery? No, um, uh, you can answer my question. Thank you. Next question. I wish she would have answered the question historically accurate. The Iowa caucus has occasionally provided candidates a critical boost, helping catapult Jimmy Carter to the presidency back in 1976. But for Republicans, the caucus is notoriously unpredictive of the party's final nominee, as some have found out the hard way. God bless the great state of Iowa. Ted Cruz won in 2016, then watched Donald Trump dominate the primaries on his way to his first nomination in White House win. Now, as the candidates make their final pitches to Iowa caucus goers, the question that has loomed over the whole race still remains. Can anyone catch Donald Trump? Vaughn Hillier joins us tonight from the campaign trail in Des Moines, Iowa. So, Vaughn, you talked in your piece about the ground game playing out in the Hawkeye State right now. But as you know, there's also a massive battle playing out there on the airwaves. We know candidates and other groups have already spent more than $100 million in TV ads in the state. How do those numbers break down? Right. Right now, you're looking over the next two weeks here. Nikki Haley and her allies looking to spend four and a half times the amount of money on TV ads compared to Donald Trump and his allies. This for Nikki Haley is a big moment, trying to make up for the lack of time she has actually spent on the ground here in the state of Iowa, Tom. Compare the number of events Nikki Haley has had over the last seven months to Ron DeSantis in Iowa. Ron DeSantis has done more than three times the number of events of Nikki Haley. He's visited all 99 counties, three times that of Nikki Haley. And so really the question here is, does that TV ad spending, does that time on the ground, is that a reward, Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis are at all? Or does Donald Trump, as polling suggests, take this clear uh, far and away heading into New Hampshire? We'll know in two weeks. Vaughn, this is not your first rodeo in Iowa. Anything surprising you right now about the race happening there? Just how much it has not moved, largely when you're talking to voters here on the ground. There are Trump loyalists. One thing that I'm looking for, though, is how many independents or registered Democrats show up on caucus night and come and change their party registration in an effort to help out somebody like Nikki Haley as an attempt to stop Donald Trump. That's what I'm going to be looking for here over the next two weeks, Tom. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking.
So there's a man himself, folks, President Donald Trump, out there on the stump, stumping it up, <laughs> up by 50 plus points in the Iowa caucus. And unless there's some kind of crappy shenanigans, unless there's some kind of unbelievable cataclysmic event, Donald Trump is going to win the Iowa caucus. And then just basically from there, roll on down. Right now, as he talked about here, now this, you know, was a piece from NBC News. They've never been conservative, the NBC News. And I'm sure they were, they had, they were probably, I mean, just they, they probably didn't want to release this because of what it's basically saying, but they have to report the news. But I'm sure they did it with a huge amount of reservation. And still, you saw a thing sprinkled inside where they said, oh, and Donald Trump still facing 91 criminal counts. Oh, Donald Trump still facing 14th Amendment charges in various states to keep him off the ballot. You know, Donald Trump this, Donald Trump that. Oh, Donald Trump said he was going to act as a dictator from day one. No, he didn't. He said he was going to act as a dictator for only one day when he's elected, just for one day only. Then after that, he's going to be okay. These people take everything this man says literally. They don't understand a joke. They wouldn't know a joke if it hit them on their derriere. They just un don't understand their, you know, his uh, voting block. They don't understand the people that admire him, that love him, that adore him, because he's the only one. Is he perfect? Absolutely not. But is he the only one that basically senses what the American people want? He's got the pulse of the people that are backing him and he's basically is fighting for everything that flyover country and middle America wants. He's fighting for who? The forgotten man and woman. He's fighting for who? Flyover country. He's fighting for who? Not the country club class, but the country class. That's right. And for, I think, what was it? Uh, Kim Reynolds the governor of Iowa, I have no idea what drugs she was smoking or what drugs she was ingesting or who, what she was inhaling. But I, again, Ron DeSantis has really, really, really disappointed me. Because right now they say the position jockeying in Iowa and everywhere else is for number two. I, that number two to me doesn't mean VP. It just means number two on the donor poll. That would be Nikki Haley. And how she's making the surge right now. And you know what? Okay, so she forgot to answer the question about, you know, the civil war and slavery. Who gives a crap in the in the in the whole scheme of things? When you're dealing with countries, when you're dealing with international relations, when you're dealing with terrorists, when you're dealing with domestic terrorism, overseas terrorism, when you've got to, you know, get that call at two, three in the morning that they basically say. When you were the person that's going to have to make that decision whether or not, um, you know, that you've got to retaliate for something that occurred either on American soil, God forbid, or somewhere else. Does it really matter whether or not you forgot who the freak cares about whether the Civil War was caused by slavery and what it was? Who gives a crap? We've already apologized for that GD thing for crying out loud. How many damn times do we have to bring that crap up? means absolutely nothing, 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 zip, zero, not a zilch, means nothing. But yet, the media is going to continue to feed us that verbal diarrhea that she forgot to mention the slavery in the Civil War. Oh, well, you know, Nikki Haley, you're out. And Ron DeSantis, where was his fight? Where was his, you know, intestinal fortitude? Now, if you had to, if Trump wasn't on the ticket, I would, it, and Ron DeSantis was my only choice, I would begrudgingly take Ron DeSantis over anybody that the Democrats threw out there. But I don't, I was, in the beginning, before this all started, I thought he would be a great VP. But I didn't think it was really his time to run for president, just sit in the background. If he would have just sat in the background and not come up. <laughs> Whoever told him that he had a chance against Trump, 
that if he thought so, boy, was that a poor political calculation on his part. Because I was thinking he waits in his wings, waits his turn. Trump turns it over to him. He endorses Trump. He stumps for Trump. He basically goes in as America first. Trump gets it there, picks him as his VP. Now he's a VP for four years. And then he is the prohibitive favorite to take the next eight years. And that way he doesn't piss off Trump. He doesn't piss off, uh, you know, the people that like him. And he doesn't get into this verbal sparring match between the two. That's, and you know, who, who genuflected first? Who said that I needed to give him, you know, my endorsement? You didn't do this. You didn't do that. You had to say this. You had, and then now it's tit for tat, tit for tat. And now, you know what? Anyways, Trump right now is dominating. And I believe if they didn't have played some type of, you know, these stupid games with the legislature and allow other people to make the rules as they go along, Trump would have been president in 20, you know, he would have been president in 2020. They took it away from him. Anyways, folks, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. And this is what we brought for you, folks. This was on tap for you today. We would love for you to go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you think that the content is worth it, and we certainly think it is. Check out our other videos up above here, below down here, and I'll give you my final thought, which is when you're right, you're right, and when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.